San Diegans, many of you are trying to find ways to stay cool tonight with the unrelenting heat hitting us set to last for a few more days. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Chiquetta. I'm Marcella Lee. An excessive heat warning is in effect right now for San Diego County valleys, mountains and deserts and it will be here through Monday. Tonight we have team coverage. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes is standing by with the efforts to help people who might not have a cool indoor space to go to. But we begin tonight with CBS 8's Jenny Day in for Carleen tonight with more on that excessive heat warning. Jenny, what's happening out there right now? You know, what a time to fill in because it is very, very hot outside. Again, 91 along the coast today, 103 for our inland valleys and our mountains close to that triple digit mark. And then the desert far surpassing it tomorrow, Sunday, even Monday will be a very similar story. Really not expecting any relief from this heat until Wednesday. So current temperatures right now, even at six o'clock at night, almost 80 degrees along the coast. That is very, very warm and rare. So 92 still at this hour in Ramona, an impressive 80 degrees in La Mesa, 77 in the South Bay, and then 110 degrees in Borrego Springs. So the National Weather Service has extended these alerts. They were set to expire tonight. Now we have a heat advisory along the coast until Monday at 8 p.m. as well for the majority of us, an excessive heat warning well into Monday. We could even break some records for our overnight lows because, yeah, they're not going to get very low. Keep it here. We'll have a closer look at the forecast highs for tomorrow. Thanks, Jenny. And like she just said, heat warnings and alerts have been extended for a few more days, and not all of us have a cool place indoors to cool off. It's even more challenging to stay safe in the dangerous heat for people who are living in their cars or out on the streets. CBS 8's Kirsten Holmes joins us live from Shelter Island with what homeless advocates are saying tonight. Kirsten. Yeah, I'm here on Shelter Island where right now it's about 75 degrees and that is a welcome relief from the 91 high that we had earlier today. Temperatures are supposed to be 10 to 25 degrees above normal throughout San Diego County and that's leaving those struggling with homelessness now struggling to survive in the dangerous heat. Be living on streets or asphalt, so the, the heat conditions out there are very different. Josh Bohannon is the chief strategy officer for Father Joe's Villages. He says their population doesn't have a place to go to beat the heat. That's why they work to meet people where they are. We just follow up. We check with them, see how they're doing, see their health conditions, and provide them tools to to stay cool. Josh says advocates for people experiencing homelessness point those in need to any one of the city's cool zones like local libraries and recreation centers. San Diego County's 2024 point in time snapshot of San Diegans living on the street found more than 10,000 people are experiencing homelessness. Josh says if there's room, there are places with day centers like Father Joe's that people can turn to to cool off. You know our day center is open to the public um, 9 to 5 during the hot hours that we're going to experience today. In our day center, we have access to showers, um, we have indoor AC, and we have shade where people can come and relax and get escape the heat during the day. We bring street health to people who can't make it to clinic or make it into urgent care, so we bring it to them. Tuesday Moon works for Father Joe's street help team. She says we do all kinds of wound care, different treatments, but right now we're very focused on this weather. Um, we go out with water, we do baseball hats, we have sunscreen. Um, if we see someone who is maybe getting um, burns on the bottom of their feet, uh, we say one shoe or no shoes. I just did it in the courtyard today. We get them some fresh pair of slides, some socks, we, we tell them to get in the grass. Extreme heat is responsible for more deaths every year than any other weather-related event. Those experiencing homelessness are at higher risk. That's why Josh says there are symptoms you should watch for. Severe sweating, agitation, um, headaches, um, possibly fainting or, or some kind of nausea. And so it's important that people who are experiencing these symptoms immediately try to find a cool place, right, so they can cool down. If you or someone you know needs to find somewhere to go to beat the heat, remember the city has opened their cool zones for you. Think all of our public libraries and some of our recreation centers. For more information on that, you can go to our website, cbs8.com, and click on this story. Reporting live for CBS 8, I'm Kirsten Holmes. Back to you. Thanks, Kirsten. And for the latest weather conditions and alerts on the go, you can download the free CBS 8 app from Google Play or the App Store. 
An explosive scene at sentencing today for Ali Abulaban, the man convicted in the so-called TikTok murder case. The social media personality will spend the rest of his life in prison. As CBS 8's David Gofferson reports, there were several outbursts during the hearing. And Ali, if I had known what my sister had been through with all the abuse, if I had known... As the sister of murder victim Anna Abulaban started her victim impact statement in court, the defendant, Ali Abulaban, tried to apologize to her, triggering an outburst. What did they do to you? You didn't do anything to you. You know, you know Anna Marie is not going to go cheat. All right. If you didn't cheat, fight. During his murder trial earlier this year, the defendant, who went by Gin Kid on social media, accused his wife, Anna, of cheating on him. His defense claimed it was a crime of passion when Abulaban ambushed Anna and her friend, Ray Barron, inside an East Village high-rise, shooting and killing both of them. I lost my baby brother, my baby brother, and as the way he had to leave this earth is not something that he deserved. After several family members spoke, Abulaban read his own statement. I am so incredibly sorry to each and every one of you who have been affected by this. I cannot imagine the pain that I've caused your family. Including a message to his young daughter, who is now being raised with no mother or father present in her life. Amira, when you're old enough to see this, please don't blame yourself. None of this is your fault. Your mom loved you so much. And I love you so much. In the end, the judge sentenced Abulaban to the maximum life without parole, plus an additional 50 years to life for using a gun. The bottom line here is he will die in prison. He will never be a free man. He will take his last breath there. In this, in this, please, please, please. Family members of the victims reacted to the sentence outside court. This was the best, the best we could hope for, and we just thank God that our prayers have been answered, and now we can all rest. David Godfordson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. Crews are now waiting for a fire at an sdg &E battery storage facility to burn itself out. Today, some schools in Escondido were closed because of the fire, including the Carolyn Gilbert Education Center, the Del Dios Academy of Arts and Sciences, and Rock Springs Elementary School. Again, those schools all closed. Limitless learning went to virtual instruction. The fire started yesterday afternoon at the facility on Enterprise Street. It could take 48 hours for it to burn out. This trench you see in the video is causing quite the controversy in one Spring Valley neighborhood. It's been like this for months, and neighbors say it's a dangerous hazard. CBS 8's Brian White is working for you to get to the bottom of who's responsible. It's very frustrating because it's dangerous for the cars. A neighbor dug this trench along Canyon Road for a retaining wall on the side of his property, but neighbors say he didn't get any permits for it. He just went ahead and did it, and then... Uh, they were working on it, and then all of a sudden the work stopped. That was about four months ago, and since then, Naomi Aragon says it's hard for her to safely pull out of her driveway. We don't want any cars going into the ditch because they didn't see a, a post, you know, so that's what our concern is, is the road. And when is it going to be fixed? Neighbors say the trench makes the road too narrow for fire trucks and ambulances to get through. If a fire department come into right here, he can make it, you know. It's only like 10 foot. Diego Hernandez also lives on this road. He says SDG&E has an easement along here for utilities. You see 50 foot right here to right here, and then another 50 foot right here. I confirmed with the County of San Diego that this is a private road and that there have been no permit applications received for this project. And if they plan to build the wall higher than three feet, it would need approval first. Diego and I knocked on their door. <laughs> Turns out the homeowners, Bill and Debbie, have been gone all summer, but their friend Tina spoke to us. They were notified by the county that this wall needs to go up. There's four months, four months. I checked, and the county says they have nothing to do with this, and SDG&E says they told the homeowners they need to hire a licensed surveyor to make sure they're staying within their property line. You know, it's not pleasant for anybody. Who wants to deal with this? As far as the timeline for when this will all be resolved, Tina didn't know. Meanwhile, Neighbors feel stuck with this mess and wish there was more communication. To this day, he has not made any contact with me at all. I'm not real happy about that. 
We'll keep you posted on this in Spring Valley working for you. Brian White, CBS 8. Thanks, Brian. And remember, if there's something you'd like us to look into, email us at workingforyou at cbs8.com. A federal congressional hearing held in East County. That story's still ahead. Plus details on Republican vice presidential candidate Senator J.D. Vance's trip to San Diego today. But first, a look at how soccer superstar Alex Morgan has changed the game for women and girls as she prepares for the final game of her professional career.